for BBA. Control shift enter or a macro wave. Well, there's my G on the CSE. Billy J getting down with the VBA. Oh my, it's doing an Excel time. Stand by, it's doing an Excel time. Mama, it's doing an Excel time. Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our duel number 196, how to flip a column in Excel. All right, Mike, I got a great one for you today. Over there in column A, we have a list of items. We don't know how long the list of items is going to be, uh, and we want to reverse those items. So whatever's at the bottom, we want to bring to the top, and whatever's at the top, we want to send to the bottom. Unfortunately, these are sorted by something that we don't no longer have in Excel, all right? And I'm gonna throw in a bonus point uh, for the fewest number of helper columns, all right? So our goal is Spinosaurus goes from the top to the bottom. All right, so my method is gonna be equal sort by new function in Microsoft 365. Here's the array that we wanna sort. How do we wanna sort it? We wanna turn it upside down. So I'll do that by creating a sequence in reverse. Uh, we have 11 rows. I guess I could do count A of that range. And then how many columns? I'm going to leave that blank, which will give us one. Start, I'm going to leave that blank, which will also give us one. And then the step negative one, uh, which will gen generate a sequence in reverse. And then Spinosaurus moves from the top and comes out of the bottom. All right, there we are. Select the whole thing. Control C and then Alt ESV to paste special values. All right, that's my method one. Mike, what do you have? Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, I've been flipping columns for decades because in academia, in the syllabus, you have to list grading possibilities from biggest to smallest in the syllabus. But of course, the lookup functions have always needed the table to be smallest to biggest. And guess what? I would have never thought of using sort by and sequence. If I F9, that is totally clever to take advantage of the default ascending in sort by. All right, since the vast majority of Excel users in the world do not have Microsoft 365, I'll use the index function. And in the array, these are the items to look up. And we need to lock it, so I hit the F4 key, comma. And now in row number, what do I need? Well, there's 11 items. So as I copy the formula down, I need 11, 10, 9, 8, and so on. I use the rows function highlight the entire range, and guess what? I'm going to use a shrinking range by locking the second reference. So I'll F4 lock the row reference 14, but that 4, as I copy down, will go 5, 6, 7, and so on. So the rows will give us 11, 10, 9, 8, and so on. That's our formula. Close parentheses, Control-Enter. I do have to copy it down. It doesn't spill. Go to the last cell in F2. That is beautiful. Rows is counting 14 to 14, which is 1. Now we could use the same approach if you wanted to spill it, but that means you'd have to have Microsoft 365. So we take all of these. We do not have to lock, comma. And I'm still going to take rows. So that gives me 11. But from 11, I need to subtract 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So I'm going to use row. And this will give me 4 to 14, close parentheses. And then that's an array of numbers, but we'll subtract a single number. That's row 4. So 4 minus 4 is 0. 5 minus 4 will be 1. And that's exactly the pattern we want. Close parentheses, close. And I'm not using any of the new functions, but if you have the new Microsoft 365 or Excel 2021 amazing worksheet formula engine, when I hit Enter, I get a bunch of errors. F2, it's because I have to force that subtraction before that subtraction. And when I hit Enter, bam, there's a spilled version. All right, I still like this one the best, but of course, what's the problem with the old school method? You have to worry about locking. 
you have to worry about copying. And if you edit, you have to come to the top cell and recopy. None of those issues happen with dynamic spilled arrays. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. This is beautiful. I expected, I expected your first one to be an index, but I never saw the contracting range coming for rows. That's beautiful. I always have an expanding range. I've never gone the other way. This is a great solution. But this, all right, respect. This is, this is great, and I see what you're doing there, that it's just a single formula that's going to spill, and that's awesome, but it's too complicated for me. I'll have to go see if Tommy Two-Tone can record a song so I can remember this. Actually, I don't think he can. All right, here's the one. This is the one. I think this is the one uh, that is really cool, although, uh, let's see, we don't need Microsoft 365, but it has to be less than 255 items, and there can't be any duplicates in the list. I'm going to choose the list, File, Options, Advanced, scroll all the way down to the bottom, Edit Custom Lists, and Memorize that list as a custom list. That's why it has to be less than 254. Okay, so the list, of course, is already in the correct sequence. Click OK, click OK. But then, Data, Sort, over here in the order, I can choose a custom list which doesn't seem like it's going to help because the list is still in the correct order, but <laughs> this is so wild. I've seen this before and like, when would I ever use this? Clearly, it was just waiting for this duel. They now offer the list in the forwards direction or the list in the backwards direction. How cool is that? Click OK. Done. No need for any helper columns at all. All right, take that. Let's see what you have, Mike. Mr. Excel, you definitely get the extra points because I don't have a method that's not a formula. But what if I want a custom function that I can use any time to flip any column? Well, that's where lambda comes in. Now, the only input we're going to need, and we have to give this variable a name, column to flip. And that name will show up in the screen tip when we use this later. And now we create our formula. And I'm just going to steal your awesome sort by and the array. Well, I'm a bad typer, so I'm going to click and copy. Control V, comma, by array one, sequence. And then I want the number of rows, Control V. And then columns, we're going to skip. Start, we're going to skip. Step, minus one. Close parentheses on sequence, close on sort by, close on lambda, and I want to test it before I put it up in define name. So I'll open parentheses and highlight, close parentheses, and when I hit enter, bam, there's lambda to flip this. Now we copy everything except for the testing part, control C, enter, control F3 to open up name manager, new. I'm going to call this something really easy to understand, like flip column. And then down here equals Control V. And that's it. Click OK. Click Close. Now I'm going to flip this awesome column of text equals flip. And there it is. And look at the screen tip. It's even got column to flip. And when I hit Enter, bam, there's Lambda to flip. But no extra point, because that's still a formula. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Well, I'll be, I, I was convinced you were doing Power Query. I mean, Power Query. How, how did you not do Power Query? But you blew me away with this Lambda. Uh, what a great formula. And once it's in defined name, that you can flip anything. I love that. For me, this gets the point. But let's take a look at Power Query. You know, Mike, it's Thanksgiving Day. Right, But that's not going to stop your viewers or my viewers from yelling at us for not using Power Query. Right? So watch this. I'm going to create a name range here of flip me. And then data from sheet. There's my data. I'm going to add a column, an index column from 0. And then the Home tab. Do Z to A to flip it and then remove. All right, now watch this. Close and load. Close and load two. And in real life, I'm going to go all the way out to column Z or 
you know, somewhere where no one's going to see it. But for right now, we'll put it right there. Click OK. All right. Then this equal. Double click to copy that down. Hide column C. All right, but column C still contains a real live query. So every time I do refresh all, <laughs> it flips. And I have a uh, formula up here to uh, see if Spinosaurus is the top item to do ascending or descending. How about that? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Thanksgiving surprise for you. If you like these videos, please down below, like, subscribe, ring the bell for both the Excel is Fun channel and the MrExcel.com channel. Feel free to post any questions or comments down in the comments below. Well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun. Let's hear you, Nancy.